Greetings, everyone. Peace. <clears throat> I'm going to try to wait a few seconds before I jump in. Those that are already in here, if you have a question or something you want me to touch bases on, go ahead and chime in for me. Um... I'm going to be talking about the new moon and the solar eclipse energy we got going on tomorrow. Peace. So. I'm actually checking a client's chart. I might post something about this. Uh, I'm thinking on the page or whatnot. How many of y'all got y'all natal chart? Or know how to get your natal chart? Peace, peace, everyone that's coming in. New moon, solar eclipse. What are you doing? I'm trying to read over some. Peace. How do you get your chart? What is the best site? Um, so what y'all need to go to. Okay, so for most users, I always tell y'all to go to like the astrology.com because I like how they break down your chart and they um separate certain dynamics and it's simplified. Um, so you can see where all the planets are, um, where um, certain placements, where your um, north node is, which I deal with Vedic astrology. So that's normally like your your um, Rahu and Ketu energy, um, which is your karmic line. Um, so astrology.com. I don't know if somebody can put that in the chat um, for me. It's astrology.com. That's going to give you that part. But then I go to astro.com to get where my Chiron is. So Chiron is your wounded healer. That's normally your lifelong challenge. That's the thing that you seem to always repeat. Or you seem to always stumble across or it always interact. Yes, that's right. Thank you. Um, it always interact into your, um, your life. Or you throughout your patterns until you learn how to heal it. It's one of the, the key things that y'all end up having to work on. So getting your natal chart would be really beneficial. So I'm giving y'all a tip. Getting this natal chart will be really beneficial tonight. Um, so y'all can know how and what you need to focus on coming into this new moon and solar eclipse. Getting your natal chart. I do natal charts, but I'm not even telling you to come to me because I ain't going to have time. Get your natal chart. See where your Capricorn is placed. Get your natal chart. Peace. And see where your Capricorn is placed on your chart. Okay. You can go to astrology.com for y'all that's just coming in. You can scroll through the comments. Um, it's astrology.com or astro.com. The only reason you're pulling astro, because most of y'all, if y'all go to astro.com, you're going to be frustrated and you're going to be mad at me because you're going to try to figure out how to read that chart. <laughs> and for me, it's easy and I feel like it's easy, but I've been told that it's not and it looks like gibberish. So, peace. Um, if you go to astro.com, you can see exactly um, where your Chiron and it'll have the letter K um, placed in your chart. So that's the only reason that I really want y'all to use Astro because um, astrology.com doesn't give you the Chiron. And that's really a key part of knowing some challenges you might be having in your life.
okay? Um, when we're dealing with these charts, I just, I really, really stress upon, you're going to hear so many people with their own views and ideals and big, like, it's your blueprint, Trust me when I tell you, like, I've had my natal chart since I was 18, peace, um, and I didn't pay it any attention. I was looking at that man like, I didn't really want this chart done. You keep insisting that I get my chart done. I just came to get some oils and incense. That's all I want. You over here talking about auras and, and natal charts. Fast forward. <laughs> yes, astro.com. Um, fast forward when I actually understood what the natal chart was for and I understood how to break a natal chart down is when I had the blueprint to my life. Fortunately, I had been on track. So it had everything for me working in women's um, goods or things that pertain to women. It had so much information. It even had where my moon placement was saying that I would have a bunch of kids which I do. <laughs> um, it had my Chiron placement, which was challenges with relationships, which I should have listened to when I was 18. Um, it had Pluto placement where it was telling me of childhood trauma, things that I needed to work on and release in order for me to be where I'm at, how I needed to use me and my business that was going to be a key part of me having my own business which that was in my chart as well um not being able to go by anybody else's rules don't play well with others <laughs> so all of these things were in my chart so that's why i'm really stressing upon y'all to get your chart um it would be really beneficial because of what this particular capricorn um new moon and the solar eclipse represents. Okay. So y'all that's just chiming in. We're talking about the new moon. And this solar eclipse. That we got going on. This eclipse energy. Um, that we have. Coming up this weekend. And how do we work with it. So I had a great question from actually one of the girls. In my um, class. And her question was. There's conflicting people. Like people are saying. Oh don't. Don't you know. Try to do no. New moon, ritual, magic, da, da 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 all of that. Okay, so let me break this down. So with new moon, really when you come into that first couple of days of that energy, you really should be, and I stress this to everybody, you should be sitting still. You should be getting in a space of meditation. You really should be getting in a, a, a space of receptivity so you can open up to what the downloads is coming down in that particular portal. Because all of this, opening and talking about like the one one ones and all these different dynamics that go on with the the cosmos are opening up portals so when we're opening up these portals this is time frame where you can get more energy you can receive more information from the cosmos from your ancestors spirit gods whatever you want to look at it this is your opportunity to tap into your highest self and the energy that is connected to your higher self so you can have a clear ideal of how to manifest what it is that you're trying to manifest. So, with Capricorn being about long-term success, a lot of people, if you are on here that I've been doing readings with recently, um, a lot, of, even with the one card pulls, what have I been talking about? Long-term success. Some of y'all have been getting, especially Baba Earth, y'all been getting these cards that represent long-term success. So, in order for you to really manifest that, this is the opportunity for you to sit still during this new moon. Still do your ritual work. That It, it really is depending on how you get into your ritual work. So, while you're in this, these first early hours, you're supposed to be doing cleansing your space. You're supposed to be doing basics like spiritual baths, releasing. Because that's what this energy is all about. Releasing things that do not serve you. What you done carried over from last year that y'all know y'all weren't supposed to come in with this year. <laughs> releasing all of that. Taking time to like banish energy that is not serving you. 
I'm going to try to do a one card. If I'm not doing a one card pull tonight, I'm definitely going to do it sometime during the day tomorrow since I'll be at the shop doing cards tomorrow anyway. Um, so most likely I'm going to designate that time frame for um, one cards. Um, I think your name is Aisha. <laughs> she like do something tonight no i don't i can't i'm gonna see i might come back on if i have time i'll come back on we'll see um but yes this is the time to sit still listen go get your chart see where your capricorn is where is it placed so you can understand where that is trying to build this long-term success this is where you can really get an, an energy or, or a download for that I need to go on tour. Hi, can you um, do a spiritual bath the day of the ritual? Yes, you can. Um, you can. So don't get... Okay, so let me do a side note. Because y'all get me so sidetracked. I'll be trying to stay on track. Okay, side note. Please understand, don't limit yourself. Okay? I think I said this the other day, but for whatever reason, the video didn't say, oddly enough. But don't limit yourself. Don't feel like you have to be stuck to a time frame or a day or whatever. Because what I explained the other day, we have nine portals within our body. Okay? We have portals in our body that have direct access. I'm stressing upon certain energy right now just because we, if you haven't gotten to a certain space where you can manifest or work with certain energy any day of the week, these are opportunities that it makes it more receptive. It makes it easier for you. Okay. So it's going to be easier for you to connect to source. It's going to be easier for you to connect to certain energy and certain information when planets are aligned a certain way. So because this particular new moon and eclipse is in a certain energy, which is Capricorn. Capricorn is all about working for our long-term success in whatever house it sits in for you. So let's say it sits in business for you. This is a time that you should be sitting still getting those downloads on a clear plan and a clear blueprint on how to map out your destiny. How to map out what you need to be doing this year for your business and how to manifest. So once you get those downloads and you set still for that day of the new moon going into the next day, now it's time to do that manifestation work. Now it's time to do the ritual work. Now it's time to get into the candle magic and the jars and whatever it is that you want to do. Okay? Setting your sigils up, all of that. This is what, how you should be operating honestly with every moon. Every moon phase, every, you know, whatever ritual that you're doing, you should be in the energy of let me sit still with myself meditate receive the downloads receive the information and a clear path and a clear understanding of which direction i'm supposed to be going then let me work my magic peace everyone peace 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 so that's pretty much how you should should be operating spiritual baths honestly y'all could be taking that every day every other day if you work with a lot of people you come into a contact with a lot of people them baths you should be having popping on the regular. Especially right now because we're so receptive to so much energy. So, them spiritual baths should like almost be like a part of your regular routine. Whether it's a moon phase or not. <laughs> um, I saw somebody else ask me another question. Hold on, sorry. I'm going to come up with another class because I had so many people asking about um, peace. Um, the other class and my other class is full. Um, so I'm going to try to figure out another way, but I think I'm going to just break it down into different um, classes so y'all can just take what you want. Maybe it could be more a la carte. Maybe I'll do um, a class that's specifically on spiritual baths and the type of spiritual baths and how to make your own spiritual baths what's the chart oh that's what i was looking for i knew you had a question um the natal charts so that's what i was saying if you don't have your natal chart go to astrology.com or go to astro.com and it's going you put in your birthday your birth time 
and your birthplace. And it's going to give you this <clears throat> chart, a map, a circle, a pie. And it's going to break down what was going on in the universe exactly when you were born. Another key thing that y'all should be looking at is when you came into the world, what was the moon doing? Like for me, full moon is normal is my energy. So my my most powerful time frame will be around the full moon. That's my most powerful time because that's when I, I decided that I wanted to bless the universe. So you need to find out in that chart, where was the moon placed? What was the moon doing? So you know exactly there's certain times of the month, just like moon cycles, literally, there's certain times of the month that you're going to be at your most powerful. It'll also give you more information if you're a female about how your cycle is. When you're like, you got to pay attention. Sometimes we're more tired and we're more reserved. You got to pay attention to how, what it, what your body is doing during those days. But if you look at your chart and you see where your Capricorn is placed, you'll kind of know how you should be directing your energy throughout this weekend. This is a really, <clears throat> even if it's not per se place where you want, to, want it to be placed. This is a really great time and a great opportunity for you to, like I said, work on long-term success, long-term goals, things that you are structuring and setting up, whether your focus is relationships right now, that's what you need to be manifesting during this moon time. If your focus is um, business, that's what you should be manifesting during this time frame. But making sure this is like they let a really powerful eclipse energy and moon energy for you to be able to um, release and shed this dead weight that y'all been carrying over from last uh, month. What is the site? Um, the site, again, is astrology.com or astro.com. Ooh, that's a, 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 a really long, that's a whole nother video. Menstrual cycles for women. Like, that's a, that's our, really our most powerful time. We can really um, do some amazing things dealing with our menstrual cycles. So... I'm going to probably inbox you information, a, a brief information, but that probably would be a really good video to get into because that's like a a whole lot of energy. But pay attention to your cycle. Like, where are you at in your cycle? Pay attention to those days. Like, is this a time frame where you seem to be more energetic? Is it a time frame where you seem to be where you're more reserved and you're tired? Thank you, Pink Petal. Astrology.com or Astro.com. So you got to pay attention to like what's going on with your body and how is your body feeling? Um, a lot of so-called, um, I don't know, dogmatic people, religious people, all of that, they get into a space where they say that, you know, the woman's cycle is, you know, evil or it's not supposed to happen. Like, I've heard plenty of vegans and that whole energy be talking about we're not supposed to have cycle. Yes, we are. There's a reason. It might be a little different. It shouldn't be as severe. It shouldn't be um, the way that maybe it has transformed into. But that was one of our most powerful tools um, as women. So, don't get caught in the trap that's all i'm gonna say about that topic i'm not pulling today i'm not i might pull i might um come back i might come back on and do some cards for y'all but i'm trying to leave all of that because i got actual people that's coming in the shop tomorrow that are doing pulls and i try not to tire myself out my energy out too much and i did a lot of pulls last night I just started just started sinking with the moon phases this time. The time I'm most drained. It's really hard for me to get in the energy. So even though it's sinking with the moon phases, honestly, during these moon phases, y'all really shouldn't be doing a lot. Like you it's really a time to be really still. It's really a time. And I think I don't know if you caught that in the beginning. 
is really a time to be still. This is a time, peace. This is a time where you're going to be still and you're going to be calm and you're going to listen. So during these moon phases, you really should just be in, like, you should be being quiet. You should be in a space where you're being still. And then when you get into, like, certain aspects, like, one of the biggest things I try to tell y'all is, like, if you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. If you already are saging your house on a regular, it don't take a whole lot for you to sage your, your space because you already do that on a regular. Some of the things that you should already be in the rhythm and the habit of when it's time for these moon cycles, it should almost be second nature. Like, dang, oh, I already got my stuff. I already got candles stacked up, whatever it is that you get into. But it should be a time where you should just really be in still, quiet, making sure that you're listening waiting for those downloads to come in. Like I said, this particular energy that's this weekend is really about giving you the information and giving you the blueprint and the clarity that you need in order to set up your success for this year. Where am I in the shop located? So I'm with Comedic Science Institute. If you don't know, that's in Charlotte, North Carolina. And we're located off of 1001... Harris Boulevard, anybody who had, is in, I don't know, Star Boy, Giovanni, if you still in here, can you um, type the address to the shop? So I'm there every Saturday, pretty much. Um, I do the class early that um, morning, and then I go and um, do readings all day on Saturdays by donation. Um so that's normally the only time after this month, I think this week, I forgot what I extended the donation pools for. But after this month um, or week, online there are price. But if you're in Charlotte, um, I do it on Saturday. I do have an online, but we already full. So I'm going to post exactly when. Oh, nice. You got to come see us. You're in Charlotte. You got to come see us. Thank you. Um, Yeah. So I do readings there. I'm normally there from like 11 to 4, I think. I try to get out of there by 4. Um, it just depends on what I'm feeling like that day or whatnot. Um, I'm sorry. I'm trying to go back and look. See, y'all making me feel bad. I ain't going to make I ain't going to let y'all make me feel bad about not doing cards today. <laughs> yes. Coffee. Yes. Thank you, Starboy. I appreciate it. Um Okay. So don't get caught up in all the different people. You need one online. Yeah, I'm doing a I'm gonna reset another class. I just gotta take some time because I'm back in school now, y'all. So I can learn and keep learning the information that I need to learn in order to teach and in order to heal um for my own, you know, mission that I, I'm on. I launched my um I actually just pulled the trigger recently and switched my one of my clothing pages to my actual healing chamber. So make sure y'all follow me on that. It's the healing chamber, um, I think, on here. You always miss when I do. I'm definitely going to do them tomorrow. I might come back on here after this and pull... What time is it? Yeah, I might come back on here and pull... Um, I'm only doing 10 if I pull. So if y'all want me to pull, this is what we'll do. If you're on here and you want me to do a one card pull, <clears throat> thank you, Pink Petal. Um, if you want me to do a one card pull, inbox me. And the first 10 people is who I'm going to do the pull for. Okay. Yes, Des. Okay, so yeah. So make sure you DM me so I can write your name down and put y'all, the first 10 people, 
that's who I'm going to pull for. And that'll be it. <clears throat> so it's interesting because while I was going through my chart and kind of going back and reflecting through, like I said, you have this Capricorn placement in your um, chart. <laughs> Y'all literally like own it. Like, let me go do this now. <laughs> um, one of my interesting houses, my house of losses, which is normally your 12th house. And sometimes you have to like pay attention to what that means. But um, Oracle or question. Um... You know you can get a card whenever you want to um card pull. Mr. uh Giovanni, you know you can get a card pull whenever. Don't do that. <laughs> but if you I'm I'm probably going I might do crystal cards. That might be good cuz I always do the other cards. So y'all want me to do crystal cards? If I come back, y'all want me to do well obviously I didn't committed myself to coming back. <laughs> y'all want me to do uh crystal cards or uh what you call it um divination right stay focused thank you netta the chart when i was going back and looking at my chart um one of the biggest issues that i noticed which was interesting for me is in my house of loss, which is the 12th house. One of the things that they said will become um, a, a complication for me would be my throat, which is interesting. One of the reasons I used to do music. So that's a whole nother video, y'all. So I used to do music and I actually used to be in a group. And one of the things that used to always create issues for me was my throat. Anytime that I'm having like um, frustrations with communicating how I'm feeling about something, I end up getting a sore throat or I lose my voice, literally. So this is why I've gotten back into this space of like making sure that I'm, I'm expressing myself and being very vocal and teaching the way that I teach now, because I know that there's going to come a time frame where I probably won't be able to use my voice as much. And that's supposed to push me into a space where I'm supposed to start writing. I ain't committed to write. I've got like a lot of books started, but I haven't committed to it, y'all. So don't judge me. That's a no judgment zone. <laughs> but that's one of the things that that's why I want y'all to get these charts. So you can already start preparing. So you can already look at certain things and what they represent um, in your life. And not even looking at it as a, a bad thing because trust and believe I'm looking up every oil. What do I need to do to make sure this throat chakra exactly keeping that throat chakra balanced, making sure that I'm always communicating and expressing myself? What is it that I need to do? But I do know that that's going to be one of my challenges because I noticed the more that I speak now, the like I'm always having to have water with me. I'm always in a space where um my throat just ends up being a little interesting um, or whatnot. So I'm trying to get into a space where I can get as much information as I can at this moment in time pushed out where it's saved. And then I'm already starting to write books so I can still express myself the way I need to express myself. But those are key things that y'all really should be looking at in these charts, like understanding why you were placed in certain placements, why you chose, because you did, you chose that particular time frame to present yourself to the world you knew that you needed to go in with these different energies happening and this is exactly what you wanted to learn through this life lesson now i have no idea why i wanted to have a damn chiron in the house of relationships i don't know what in the world was i thinking about <laughs> when i decided to to choose that particular destiny but i did and I get it now. I'm able to understand and process it and help others in a whole nother way because of my journey. But, um, you know, it, it's really um, beneficial. Charts, it, we're talking about um, natal charts, pulling your natal charts so you can, thank you, 
um, pulling your natal chart so you can get into um, where your Capricorn is placed specifically. And it'll be really good because when you, um, yeah, it chose me. Uh, <laughs> when you are working with this new moon and full moon energy, when all these different moon cycles in a certain energy, this moon is definitely in the Capricorn energy you'll know how to, like, what you should be focused on, what should be your intention. Because the whole reason that I want y'all to kind of learn and embrace astrology is because it's going to give you more guidance. You got to be very intentional. My biggest thing and frustration in every aspect of business has been that I've run across a lot of people that y'all are not being intentional. I don't care what it is. If you are a new you know, business owner, entrepreneur, be intentional, have a plan. If you are, you know, getting into the spiritual journey, be intentional, have a plan. It's super important. I Like, I don't never really get into my other businesses that I have ran. I've been self-employed since I was 18. Okay. I have been running businesses. I've set up other businesses for other, like people. I don't even name drop, but I've set up businesses for people and have made a certain amount of money in like no time. Why? Because I'm very intentional and I structure stuff out. I'm a low key like a Virgo. Low key I am when it comes to planning and got a lot of Capricorn too. So there's a way. When you are being intentional and you are planning things out, you can manifest a certain thing. So that's why I really want y'all to get into a space of learning certain dynamics and mixing all that get together. Don't be limited. Don't be limited in this particular journey. I'm trying to say, I'm sorry. Pull natal chart and look for Chiron. Yeah, pull the natal chart for... On Astro, on your Astro, and look for Chiron. On Astro.com, that's where you're going to see the K. Excuse me. Yes, honey. You know three businesses and run a nonprofit. I've been there. I, I'm retiring. <laughs> I am retiring. I'm slowly one by one transitioning out of different stuff. Just so I can focus on my, my, my true heart's desire. Because that was what I was telling y'all last week. Like, not last week, but last year was about. Last year was all about what is your true heart's desire. Removing, dismissing, eliminating anything that was not in alignment with what your true heart's desire. How often do you su suggest natal chart? You only have to pull once. Now, your natal chart is different than other type of charts. Your natal chart is specifically for when you came in the world. What was going on with the cosmos when you came in the world? That's what your natal chart is for. So that's going to be the overall energy for your whole life. It's a roadmap for your life. I tell people that all the time. It's the roadmap to your life. And then when you understand that, what about solar return charts? Those are good too. Now, solar return charts is a little different. Can you place some um, clarity on those? Yeah, solar return charts is a little different. So you, you're going to use that a little bit differently than a natal chart. I've been studying my eyes. Yes, honey. Ooh. I'm just, I'm sending you a virtual hug with that Capricorn rising. Y'all some interesting people. I love y'all, but y'all interesting. <laughs> y'all are, y'all are interesting. And you Scorpio. Ooh. Mm. Praise your mama. That's all I'm going to say. Praise your mama. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm trying to go back. Yes. That proactive is, is important. It's really important for y'all to like, now that you got, you know, the blueprint, even if you're on a spiritual journey, I, I get that question a lot. I'm on a spiritual journey. I don't walk into this space. What do I do? What, what am I doing? What, where do I go now? And 
my whole thing is still like I'm very um logical when it comes to that. It's like sit down and make a plan. Blueprint that out for real. Sit down and make a plan. If you are going into this journey and you say, Okay, I'm on a spiritual journey. Number one, I personally feel like you need to start with yourself. So that means starts with it starts with you. Why? I always say get a natal chart because it starts with you. You need to know what your purpose is, what's your destiny. What did you come back for? If you don't know that, how are you going to help the community? How are you really going to have a spiritual growth if you don't even know what you're here for? You don't have no idea what is the, the makeup for you. Your DNA, number two, that means you need to go back through your lineage. Who are your people? What did you come from? Especially us melanated people. Y'all need to know what, what tribe did you come from? Because some of y'all out here practicing certain stuff and you probably should have been tapping into Boudoum or whatever. So you would know like that's what your people did. So you might have some other type of power. You tap into one of your ancestors that might have been on some high priestess whatever energy. <laughs> But you don't know because you aren't even taking the time. You're too busy studying a broad perspective of history instead of understanding who you are. The time of birth is important because of certain movements. Some planets move quicker than others. Um, if you don't know, I always tell people to put noon. You're going to put 12 noon on your chart. Okay. So it's going to give you a, a generalized ideal of what your chart is, but it's still not going to give you like um, the pinpoint. Sometimes it's not going to pinpoint degrees. And that's going to be a whole nother video, y'all, because we don't got on natal charts. And I was really supposed to only be talking about um, this new moon and Capricorn and solar eclipse. Y'all making me feel like I got ADD or something. <laughs> um, but yeah. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> My grandma was a Geechee color. Yeah. Research that. Like knowing what your grandma was studying, your great grandmas, because they was doing stuff. I just realized my great grandma was doing some stuff. I ain't even know. I.e. why she's trying to get me to come back to the property that um she fought so hard to keep in our family. Um but yeah, knowing those two basic things before you even get caught up in, oh, I need to know what they was doing in 1840. No, you need to know what your people was doing in 1840. Because that's going to be key to why you are here. What your dynamic is. What your purpose. Your direct intention. So, know who you are. That's, to me, the most important part. You can know like a hundred books and regurgitate a whole bunch of information, but it might not pertain to your calling and your destiny. And it's a lot of people out here that's just learning stuff. I'm trying not to cuss y'all. I think I was cussing a lot the last time I checked. <laughs> but, you know, it's a lot of people just regurgitating information. We're not about that. We about walking in our power, walking in our energy utilizing the information that we are gathering. That's why I try not to get too overly in all bunch of different topics because it's like it don't have it don't pertain to you. For real. You need to know you first. And then when you know who you are, then you can say, "Oh, wow, I'm interested in herbology. Or I'm interested in XYZ." I'm not even asking for y'all to really like be official with astrology no you need to be official enough to know what it means for your chart <laughs> that way you can break down your chart and then go into certain aspects um but the key thing for this video because i am going to try to come back on here and do these cards um is paying attention to this new moon um i'm just looking at where everything is placed new moon it's in Capricorn. We have the eclipse 
energy. This energy is going to last for a long time because it is really focused on our well-being. It's focused on making sure that we are set up for success and not just short-term success. This is set up for long-term, the kind of success that is going to not only benefit us, but benefit our children, okay, um, and our children's children. So that's like that long-term. Um, no matter what it is, because sometimes people get caught up in thinking success could be financial. That could also be relationship wise. This might be a way that you are getting ready to break generational curse. So you got to really understand what it is. It might be setting you up for long term health, making sure you're doing what is needed in order to take care of this physical vessel so you can navigate this avatar properly and accordingly. Through this year because this year is a really powerful year um and these next couple of months in particular because of certain placements um it's just really going to be a powerful like moment for y'all to really like get into this energy get into the science get into everything get into yourself <laughs> so you can manifest accordingly so you can do the things that you need to do accordingly that's why I'm probably going to be on here a lot more than I normally would. And I'll probably phase out a little bit. But <laughs> uh, I want to really push home this month that this is a time for y'all to really get into this energy and set the tone for the year. So y'all can look back when the end of this year come and be like, oh, I did that. I was manifesting the hell out of some shit this year. Like, this is what y'all really need to be on. Like getting into what you need to do and what works for you. Being selfish, yes. Being all about self. Understanding that this time frame is really about nobody else. Me tunnel vision on who and what I need on all levels. And then when I'm vibrating at the frequency I'm supposed to vibrate in, everything is coming to me. Everything is like going to just gravitate to me. Mine is relationship, relations and health. I had a dream last night. An ancestor kept telling me that I am. You are the key. I promise y'all, I feel like, and I might be biased, but I know that my collective, the people that, um, however y'all gravitated to me, I do feel like we are the key to our particular lineage and our, our particular dynamic we are definitely um the ones that are going to break generational curses we are going to be the ones that move differently we're going to be the ones that set a tone on how our children start maneuvering our and they manifest in at an early age i'm trying to have, make sure that my boy is able to manifest by the time they 10 they need to be like masters out here for real because it's a lot going on it's a lot going on in the universe. It's a lot going on with the government. And we really just got to be in a space um, that we are operating in our highest self. And if we are operating in our highest self, we don't have to be worried or concerned about all the craziness that's getting ready to pop off in a few years. I try not to get into that energy, but listen, when I tell y'all, like, this is another reason why I'm like, I walked away and I'm walking away from guaranteed certain amount of dollars a month just so I can make sure that my people are right. So when I say I dedicate my life to y'all, I'm dedicating my life to y'all. I sit here and read books and study and do everything that I need to do in order to make sure that I'm raising to another higher level in order to bring my people up. Because I know that it's going to be really important and key for us to know how to do a lot of stuff. And the ones of us that have time or have the opportunity to get in here and get as much as we need to get in order to teach other people how to get it. That's what my goal is. It's like to make sure like I learn as much. I, if I got time to go and get, you know, several different levels of education <laughs> to learn how to do different things, that's what I'm going to do. Just so I can make sure that when it's time, we, we I, I'm taking as many people as I can take with me. Um. Yes. 
And with you knowing that you are connected to your ancestors, there's going to be a, a thing that you're going to be able to switch. Um, it's a, a trigger or a shift, um, sis. But yeah, it's just a lot going on. And, and the more that I study, another reason why I'm like, you know, once you get to a certain point, you figure out what is your dynamic and what you're supposed to be doing while you are here. So you can make sure that we are operating a certain way. Your strength might be in, in gardening or making sure that you raising foods and planting seeds and doing all of that. That's what we need. We need some people that's out here learning how to be engineers because we always talk about being self-sufficient, but we ain't got nobody to build a house or build some buildings or figure out how we're going to get this water. <laughs> I need for people like to be really studying the stuff that's really connected to you because there's a reason that tribes operated a certain way there's a reason that certain communities operated a certain way. you have to have a community you can't have a community with all the part without all the pieces we can't literally have a real community and we don't have all the pieces there when you think about the stories we used to read there was the the family that used to make the bread there was the family that was making the clothes you went to them to go get the shoes people had specific things that they were known to do and you have to start operating in that space because it's going to be a time that's going to come and we're going to have to almost result back to being independent if that makes sense without me really getting into it we're going to have to get into a space where we know how to do everything for ourselves and not depend on um the system, government, grocery stores, whatever, to, to supply our needs. Because it's going to be very interesting for a little while. Um, so this is the year. Get off of that note because y'all know I like being high vibrational. <laughs> I like being in a certain space. But, you know, this is the year for you to learn as much as you learn. Learn as much as you can learn. Um, this is the year for you to tap into yourself and understand what it is that your your presence is here for. How how are you being a gift? Cleanse first. Cleansing. Be still. Release any energy. The question was, I'm sorry, because I just started talking. I don't know if y'all saw that question. It says, so for the weekend... We're just being still and, clean and cleansing. What you're going to do is cleanse. When I say cleanse, I'm talking about spiritual baths. Okay. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> um, spiritual baths. And um, making sure that you're sitting still during this eclipse energy to get these, these messages. Especially in this Capricorn because it's specifically dealing with your long-term success. It's specifically dealing with wherever that Capricorn is sitting. It's going to like highlight how that's going to come into fruition. How that energy is going to um, create the long-term effects for your life, really. Um, and tapping into that right now. So you can set up, what What do I need to do? If you got a business that you're starting, what is my blueprint for the year? What are the things I need? If you're unclear about what business you're starting, this is the time frame to get that download and get that ideal. And then like, let it like, I, I want to tell y'all to sit for like at least two days. So start that sitting and being still and getting into breath, getting into your meditation, getting into yourself listening when your mind starts to somebody asked me this and i don't know if it was on here um when you're meditating or you're in that space and you, your mind racing a hundred different ways go back and focus on breath how do you center your mind and how do you be still you go back and focus on breath anytime and wander off come back so you got to think of it like us mamas, you know how you in the store and you trying to look at stuff and you got maybe your child and, you, and they keep wanting to run off, but we keep grabbing them back, pulling them back close. You got to think that's the same thing you're doing with your mind. Anytime it start wandering off, go back, bring it back, focus on your breath. Sometimes it's good to have like um, certain rhythms 
playing in the background, certain frequencies playing, because when your mind is drifting off, focus on that. Come back and focus on something that you can keep that's going to be centered. Let me just focus on this beat. Let me focus on this drum pattern. Let me focus on this frequency. Think of all of that. Like That way you can come back. Because sometimes I, I get it. When you caught up in, we caught up in survival mode, y'all. So when we in the survival mode, we got our mind thinking about, especially if you're a mother or a father, you thinking about kids. <laughs> you thinking about a hundred different things is going on in the house. And it's hard for us to come back and center ourselves. So get something that is going to, um, I can't even think of what the damn what you call it i'm thinking about the little thing that you pull and it just like go back and forth something that's going to put you in a trance okay something that is going to be consistent and it has a rhythm because we are all about rhythm and we are about frequencies so whatever it is it's going to pull you in regardless it's natural it's going to, you're going to gravitate to it especially us we, we gravitate to beats we, we gravitate to rhythm. We gravitate to music. No, not the pendulum. It's, um, I feel real special right now because I cannot remember. I hate when I have brain farts. It's the little silver things and they have the balls on the end and it'd be like seven or eight of them and you pull one and then it go and it hit and then the other one hit back. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all not going to make me feel special today. <laughs> You're not. Anyway, <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. Like having something that is going to create a distraction from your mind from racing. That's the whole goal. Have something exactly like a ripple. You want something to have like just to give you that distraction. So you can get focused. And it could be like something on the screen that's got circles. Something that is doing a motion or a rhythm in order for you to draw yourself in. That way you're being still. And then when you're being still, you'll go into a trance. That's why I was kind of like trying to get people to like start doing meditation before now because the whole goal is to get you to a point where you're right, like kinetic energy. So the whole goal is to get you to a point where you already have built up a certain time of being in trance. So now that you're in trance, you're able to listen. It's a lot of, you know, um, information going on, like why people take mushrooms, why people are doing certain things in order to access this particular um, chemical that goes off in our body. That chemical is natural. There's things that we can do naturally to get into a certain space. It's naturally going to pull us into astral travel. It naturally pulls us into connection with source. It's not... Like, don't make it more complicated than what it is. Like I said, we already naturally have that ability. Right, looking at fire. I love, that's, I'm a fire person too, so. Looking at fire, looking at that candle, watching how it flickers. Candle White, what did you say, Alicia? Newton's Cradle, thank you. I love y'all. I knew somebody on here was going to figure out what it was the reason running water running water is good because of um fountains and things of that nature like it's so many different things that you can get to create that distraction so now that you're distracted from your mind thinking about the kids your mind thinking about the work that you got to do or that you got to get up at eight o'clock in the morning or whatever your mind be focused on you know something that you should have told somebody earlier that day because they done pissed you off Whatever it was, it'll make you release it and it'll make you stay centered. So you can really get to what the true purpose is, is to connect with yourself and connect with source. So y'all can hear and start listening. And then once you get into that, then you'll probably be like me. I just be walking around in a trance. I miss so much sometimes. I promise I do. I'm doing better now. 
I'm a little more connected, but sometimes I feel like I, I just be in my own zone. I think I've been doing that for so long. <laughs> I, I, I'm very clueless sometimes about what's going on in, in this actual dimension because I'm very in tune with what I need to be in tune with. Yes, fire pit in the back while meditating. We sound like we coming to your house. You got a fire pit. We coming to your house. Next full moon, we coming to their house with the fire pit. <laughs> um... So that's that's the main thing, y'all. When y'all getting into this, sit still. Make sure y'all do some spiritual baths. Um, sage your place. Uh, make sure that the space is really clean from energy. Um, have your journals out. So after you come out of this meditation, after you come out of this time frame where you're going to download these, these messages, now you know <clears throat> what you're working towards. Now you have an ideal, a vision. And it's fixed. Now you're going to fixate it. So now when you're working on your candle magic and you're doing what you need to do, then boom, you're, you're specific. You're intentional. You see it. You're in the energy now because now you've seen it. You know what it looked like. You know what it feel like. It smell like all of that. So now you can be very intentional on working what it is that you're asking the universe to give you. <clears throat> just do one today just do one today I don't know what that means I'm sorry I feel like I'm reading that wrong or you typed the wrong one <laughs> um but okay so yeah clean space spiritual bath meditation and listen I have trouble focusing during meditation. Sometimes I don't feel like I'm doing it right. It ain't about not doing it right. First of all, I don't get stuck. Like, there's no such thing as you ain't doing it right. You doing it the way you're supposed to be doing it at this moment in time. The key is being still. Stilling your mind. So that's why I was saying making sure that y'all get into, you know, that energy of finding something that's going to distract your mind <laughs> from everything else. Sorry, just did a bath today. Okay. <laughs> so, being still. Being still. That's the whole thing that you got to think about. So, you can really get in tune and tap in the inner. Um, out, after you get your meditation, after you're listening, journal it. Write it down. Everything that comes to you, you want to write it. Okay, I got all the information. I got all my dues. Peace. Got everything that I'm supposed to do. Now, you, you are on point. Now you're operating in a certain space because now you're operating with intention. And then making sure that y'all release whatever y'all haven't released. Really, really, even in that meditation, ask, ask spirit, like, what haven't I released? What am I still holding on to? And if you still don't know after that, when you take that spiritual bath for real, y'all need to really just be like, okay, I just need y'all to release this bath, need to release whatever blockage that is hindering my success. I release every blockage, every chain, every damn, all of it. Y'all better put all the damn songs in there <laughs> and make sure that it's releasing that energy, breaking that energy up so you can move forward. I have trouble. I'm sorry. My screen froze for two seconds. And then once you get your information, your downloads, now journal it out. Be focused on it. Do your sigils. Oh, yes. Chanting. Thank you. That's why you're on my live right now. We about to be a co-host. <laughs> yes. Chanting, and I, I've, I've made posts several times about that, okay? Um, sea salt, Epsom salt, and it just depends. I have to get into it because I see them counting me down. So they're counting me down. I'm going to go get my cards, and I'll come back on and do my one cards and finish that question for y'all. All right? Bye, y'all.